Jesus, but written by a Kenyan in the name of Baba Raila Amolo Odinga. He taught me that the Britons we saw here did not come to colonize us. They came because the land was good and the land was fertile. And then he dwelt into the depth of the history that if I stayed with that idea alone and that listening alone, I'll be doomed. And that idea is what has given birth to what we are here about to listen to. The story of Kenya from the coming of the colonizers, the colonized Kenya, the post-colonized Kenya, the independent Kenya, the Kenya of the second liberation, and the Kenya of the third liberation. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Kwea. Welcome, let's listen to Baba as he unpacked that. And without much ado, I also want to acknowledge all the university students. Please give a shout to yourselves. The university students here. I can't hear that. It's not enough. And for all of you who have come, and in a special way, there's a guy from Marikiti called Mike. And I was talking and buying things from him. And he told me, I would like to come and see and hear. And he see Baba. Where is Mike from Marikiti? Mike from Marikiti. That guy from... Uh, the Marikiti guys, please stand. Marikiti. Marikiti. So Baba, in your audience, there are also guys from Marikiti. Those guys are, have come here to listen to you. So we are a mixed audience of politicians, academicians, non-politicians, and students. So ladies and gentlemen, with those few remarks, I will, I'm staying in somebody's house. I'd like to welcome the VC of this great university to come and welcome you home. Please, Prof. Thank you very much, our distinguished guest, Right Honorable Dr. Eugenia Raila Amolo Odinga, the Honorable Members of Parliament, the Honorable Leaders, the political class of our nation, our professionals, our students, and all the protocols observed. Good morning, or good afternoon. Yeah, it is my distinguished uh, honor to welcome all of you on behalf of the Catholic University of Eastern Africa to this university. We are extremely honored. We are extremely humbled to have our national leader, the Right Honorable Raila Odinga. I wish also to say that the theme of today is extremely important because a people without a history become slaves. I wish to know that there was a guy that was called Martin Luther King who one day stood up and said that I have a dream. And he looked beyond the horizon and said, beyond that horizon, there is a, a, the fulfillment of the dream. I remember in my youthful years, our chief guest also said the same statement. And when I was young, it led to the repeal of the section 2A of the Constitution. And there was the democratic space, the media got the space, the people got a democratic space, but we have found that through his energies and his sacrifices, so much has happened. But we are happy that he continues to soldier on until we reach the promised land, where there will be true democracy, true opportunity and equal opportunity for each member of our nation. It is based on that that I humbly welcome this distinguished congregation to come and listen and to participate in our events. This is a place where our chief guest came during the, the 
the presidential debates were held in this hall. For those who may not know, the gubernatorial also debates were held in this hall, and we were also privileged to be part of that democratic process that we continue to perfect in our national history. So happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy 60th birthday, our nation Kenya. It will be the country we say, cry, my beloved country. Asante Nisana. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to hand over this mic to none else but Mweshimiwa Tim Wanyonyi to be able to welcome the Right Honorable Raila Amolo Odinga because I feel I cannot walk on those shoes. But Tim being the politician he is, and being the intelligent lawyer that he is, he's able to do that. Thank you. When Tim is coming on stage, please can we have some music? DJ, DJ. DJ, weka kidogo. Thank you, DJ. Ham Jambo. Banayesu Asifiwe. Happy birthday, Kenya. To say me happy birthday, our nation, Kenya. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to make a few remarks and welcome the guest of honor, the Right Honorable Raila Amolo Odinga. Fellow Kenyans, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Allow me with great humility to introduce to you our chief guest, the guest speaker, a man who actually needs no introduction. 
the right honorable engineer Raila Amolo Odinga, the barber or second and third uh, liberation, and the father of devolution in Kenya. Baba, as many of you call him, is a living legend in this country. His legacy has been built through the years and his accomplishments are too many to name. Defining Kenya's political path has taken the collective efforts of many working along and winding path that began with struggle for independence from colonial masters that led to independence on the 12th December 1963. And I proudly say that my birthday is also in this year. <laughs> Political leadership over the last 60 years, seen the rise of different people seeking to continue the journey for making Kenya a better for all. The immense contribution by the party leader, His Excellency Raila Amolo Odinga, are outstandingly impeccable. The country's political path is colored with both his sweat and blood. His struggle saw his detained for nine years without trial. He was at the center of the fight for malpartism, not to mention the current constitution. Even though it has, even though it has For malpartism, not to mention the current constitution, even though it has some caps. The history of this great nation, when told, cannot be complete without mentioning Baba Raila Amolo Dinga. Akwambo, as some fondly refer to him, is deeply grounded in history and social economic development of this nation and Africa at large. He has taught he has taught many of us to work hard and to strive for excellence in whatever in whatever we do. He optimizes resilience and loyalty. When it comes to Building bridges, this man is second to none. Kenya today finds itself at crossroads. Our leadership is shaky. The economy is doing badly. The common manager is getting desperate by the day. To address the many challenges we face, we need an action. We need execution. And we need a bold leadership. We need Baba. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my singular pleasure and honor to introduce to you a man who has loved, who I have loved and respected my entire life. A man who introduced me to the world of politics and continues to hold my hand my bad leader, His Excellency Raila Amolo Odinga. Karibu Baba, uonge na watu wako, karibu Baba. Wela, 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 wela. Hey! Okay, we want to go! Get it, get it, but you might get it out of the fire! Fire, 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 fire! What the hell is you looking for? I ain't low, make money anymore. Shake your feet, baby, girl, I know. Imagine, imagine you're poor, don't you know I'm a low? Who are you? What are you? Who the hell do you think you are? Do you know me? Do I know you? Get the hell and close your face because hey, I am a. Oh, I am a.
Ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. The Vice Chancellor of the Catholic University, Reverend Professor Stephen Mboguangari, members of the faculty, my colleague brother Tim Anyoni, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, students, comrades power. power. Comrades power. power. Uh, thank you very much. I am very delighted to have an opportunity to speak to this audience uh, this afternoon. When uh, a suggestion was made by Florence that um, I should come and talk here. I had some mixed feelings. The last time I was here, I was attending a presidential debate. And um, I was not, don't think that I was very fairly treated. But uh, I said I would come again. And I've come again and again to this, this place. So I'm very happy to see this audience this, this, this afternoon. I was asked to talk about a vision for the next 60 years and beyond about Kenya. Now, I begin by saying that in a few days' time, we will be celebrating 60th birthday of Kenya as a nation. 60 years ago, our people proclaimed our country's independence. With that, we have found that our national right as a people to be masters of our own fate and destiny. But how did we end up as Kenya? It is important that you go back into history. Kenya, the name Kenya was coined much later by missionaries. Uh, and there's too many versions to it saying a missionary, I think it was called Mr. Rebman, was talking to a Mkamba around Mount Kenya, and he said, uh, they were talking about Kinyaga. Kinyaga. And the Sungu said, Kenya. He was talking about Kenya. But then, this geographical space called Kenya was drawn in over 100 years ago in Berlin, at the Berlin Conference, where the imperial powers met. And at that time, there was scramble for Africa. So they decided to partition Africa, 1884-85. So Africa was then parceled out uh, to various colonial interests, imperial powers. Portuguese, Spaniards, the British, the French, the Italians, and the Belgians. Spain got a, a small portion of it. So this is, this is how these maps were drawn. And these maps were drawn artificially in Berlin without any regard to the people who are living in Africa. So Africa was artificially divided among the imperial powers. That's why you see that borders among many African countries are straight lines. If you see a border with Somalia, it is a straight line. Uh, one line inside and one straight line and another line outside. A border then Tanganyika was a straight line from Lake Victoria all the way to the Indian Ocean. It was only in 1860-something, because Tanganyika was given to the Germany, to the German territory. And uh, on the German emperor's birth, 50th birthday, it was called Otto von Bismarck. Queen Victoria 
was the head of the British Empire. In a gesture said that on your 50th anniversary, I give you the highest peak in Africa, Kilimanjaro. And that is how, you see, Kilimanjaro was originally in Kenya. But then you see the map between Kenya and Tanganyika, now Tanzania, a straight line from Lake Victoria to Kilimanjaro, then it comes into Kenya, takes Kilimanjaro to Tanganyika, then again a straight line to the Indian Ocean. That is how it, it was done, it's arbitrarily. Then, uh, but formal colonization, actually, of Kenya took place in 1904. But when the British first came here, they started building the railway line. By building a railway line, and they built a railway line from Mombasa. It was called Kenya Uganda Railway. It was built from Mombasa up to Kisumu. You ask yourself, if it was Kenya Uganda Railway, how did it end up in Kisumu? The reason is at that time, Kisumu was part of Uganda. Uganda's boundary came all the way up to Naivasha. From Naivasha up to Lake, uh, up to Lake Turkana, the west of that was Uganda. That's why it was called Kenya Uganda Railway. And when it reached Kisumu, it had reached Uganda. From there, they were now checking by ship across the lake to Port Bell in Uganda. Then, um, but then this Kenya was called actually just a territory. It was actually run by a company called British East Africa uh, Corporation. They were just using it for hunting, um, coming to look for search for gold and ivory. But then came one colonial master. And one imperialist by the name of, uh, uh, his other name, but later on he became known as Lord Delamere. He came through Somalia on a horseback. And when he came on a horseback, he arrived on Mount Kenya. And then he saw a very beautiful land around Mount Kenya. It came down through Laikipia into what is the present day Nyahururu, what they called Thompson Falls at that time, into the Rift Valley, through Nakuru, Njoro, Eldoret, or Tsingishu, up to Mount, Mount Elgon. So he found a very beautiful land. So when he came back to Nairobi, he went and met the governor. He told the governor that, look, you have a beautiful land here, which is ripe for large-scale agriculture. You have built a railway line from Mombasa all the way to the west. But the railway line will have nothing else to transport. It will be transporting goods from Mombasa to interior. But on the way back, it will be going back empty. To make this railway line productive, you need to introduce large-scale agriculture. So this is now Lord Delamere. And I'm ready to go back home and campaign and bring white settlers to come and settle here and uh, do large-scale agriculture on condition that you agree that each person I bring here will get 10,000 acres free plus black laborers. The governor agreed. And after that, now they signed an agreement with Lord Delamere. Lord Delamere was going to bring settlers here each letter who came will get 10,000 acres free, uh, plus black laborers. 
But then, um, Delamere then went back to England. He addressed town hall meetings in London, in Birmingham, in Manchester, in Liverpool, telling them that down there you have found land which is flowing with milk and honey, the biblical Canaan. And whoever agrees to come there will get 10,000 acres free plus free black laborers. At that time, the story about Africa was very, very uh, disturbing and worrying in England. Nobody wanted to come, but come here. Most people did not want to come. So you got very little response. In frustration, he came back to Kenya. When he came back, someone suggested to him to try down south. So he went down south. He went by ship from Mombasa to Durban. And in Durban, he addressed town hall meetings. Durban, Port Elizabeth, East London, uh, Cape Town, Kimberley, Joburg. There he found a white man who had lived in Africa for generations and who did not fear Africa. They agreed easily to come. The prospect of coming and having their own land, because a number of them were laborers on their own fellow white farms, was very appealing. So they came, and that's how the most of white settlers who were here during that period came, a majority Boers from South Africa and Rhodesia. So that they came here, they got land and got laborers. Uh, so that's how Kenya was then occupied. So we ended up with what was called the white highlands in this country. And people were moved, population were moved to create space for these people to settle. From Laikipia, from the, the slopes of Mount, 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 Mount Kenya, the Maasai communities were living there. The whole of that Laikipia plain were moved. Around Naivasha, there was a corridor, 10 mile corridor, opened for Maasai to pass with their chasing zombies to go down to Narok and uh, Kajiado, as they called. Some Maasai were moved from Eldoret area. That area is called Wasingishu county today. But the Russian Gish Maasai are now in Transzoya, where they live. They were moved from there to create space for Wazungus to settle in those areas. In Kiricho and Bomet there, the large chunk of land was taken away from the Kipsigis and turned into tea estates. The same thing happened in Nandi. The same thing happened in central province area here and around Mount Kenya area. People were moved away from the lands and to create space for large scale farming. So that is how Kenya was now settled by the white men. And then the white men, uh, of course, they, they set up administrative structures in the country and ran this country for 60 years. So Kenya is now 60 years independent. It was also 60 years under proper colonial rule. So today now you are almost at 50-50 now. To so look at what happened, what did the colonialists do in that 60 years, and what have we done ourselves in the 60 years? Over the years, the joy of so we attained independence after a long struggle, because Kenyans were being oppressed seriously. The land had been taken away. Um, um, Africans were classified as, as not even second class, third class. 
uh, uh, people. You had apartheid in this country. There was a white man, there was the Indian, there was the Arab, and then there was the African, number four, at that time. And people rose up uh, in resistance to this colonial rule. You will hear the story of Chief Koinangi, who in 1912 had to go to the court to apply to be allowed to plant coffee in his farm, because no natives were not allowed to plant coffee. And he had to fight to be allowed to, to, to plant coffee. People were not allowed to settle in certain parts of their country. But there was resistance in 1922. A man called Hari Duku led a demonstration in the center of Nairobi, near where the central police station is today. And the colonial police opened up fire, and many people were killed. Some were arrested and detained. Hari Duke was taken to Kismayu, which was then part of Kenya, and he detained there for several years. Then came later on the struggle for land, the Mahama struggle. But there was also struggle in other parts of the country. We were in Kenya. But before that, the Nandi resistance, as you heard about, led by Samuel in Koitalel. The Kamba resistance here, led by Mwindu and Bingu. Uh, the resistance by the people of Western Kenya, Ojijo Teko. Agula Awala, Elijah Masinde, Wanameme, just mentioned but a few. You will remember, of course, Mekatiri uh, Wamenza um, from the coast. So there are several uh, people of this country who resisted colonialism. Eventually, uh, Mau Mau Freedom Movement came up in 1952. And a state of emergency was declared in this country. Many people were arrested, were detained. Very many people were killed during that struggle. It's a very bloody struggle. You must remember that before that, a man called Wayaki Wahinga was arrested from his home, taken all the way to the Savo, made to dig his own grave, and was buried alive in his own grave. So uh, the struggle was, was very bloody. But in the end, independence came. And independence was a combination, the struggle was a combination of the freedom fighters who were fighting and those who mobilized the masses to protest, to urge for independence in this country. And of course, you remember the Kapengoria 6, Diomo Kenyatta, Willard uh, Kagia, Chengo Neko, Kumu Karumba, Fred Kubai, Paul Ngei. Then came the first elected African members of LEGICO. You remember Jaramogo Gengo Dinga, Masinde Muliro, Tom Boyer, uh, um, Lawrence Oguda, Daniel Rapmoy, Ronald Ngala, uh, uh, Zao Mwimi. Uh, those were the people who were elected members. Eventually, others joined, and independence came on the 12th of December. Now, when Kenya became independent, of course, people were very, very expectant. Kenyans were some of the most optimistic people at that time. 
because you retain independence. People uh, thought that prosperity will come immediately with independence. Uh, but at that time, they coined what you would call the Kenyan dream. The Kenyan dream as coined by the founding fathers of our nation. And you find it in our national anthem that says, God bless this land of ours. Just be our shield and defender. We will dwell in unity, peace, and liberty, plenty be found within our borders. What does this mean? God, God bless this land of ours. Justice be our shield and defender. Justice can only be a shield and defender if there is democracy. May we dwell in, 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 in unity, peace, and liberty. Unity means that people who are united, people where, where there is no form of discrimination, other than the basis of race, tribe, religion, or gender. Peace and, and, peace and, and, and unity. Peace. Peace is not merely in the absence of war. Peace is not merely in the absence of war. Somebody who is hungry is, cannot be peaceful. A hungry person is, cannot be peaceful. So uh, it has got a wider meaning, that peace that is talked about there. But finally says, plenty be found within our borders. Plenty be found within our borders is a very strong statement. That plenty was not going to drop like manna from heaven. It was going to be a product of the sweat and toil of the people of Kenya. Meaning what? Meaning that you must create a conducive environment for people to create wealth. People must be enabled to create wealth. And this is freedom and the rights. One is the, the right to life was fundamental. To the right to health is fundamental. The right to quality education is fundamental. Right to food is fundamental. Right to, um, to, to education. Right to uh, to education. So all these were there. But then people were expectant. But over the years, the joy of independence has been tempered by many battles, a struggle that has continued for six decades. We have fought poverty. We have fought ignorance. We have fought disease. We have fought corruption and you have fought tribalism. But these challenges march on with us. In spite of our tribulations and against monumental odds, we have fought and we are still struggling to build a thriving democracy. We are still fighting for individual freedom within our free nation. So Kenya is now 60 years independent. It was also 60 years under proper colonial rule. So today now you are almost at 50-50 now. To look at what happened, 
what did the colonialists do in the 60 years, and what have we done ourselves in the 60 years? Over the years, the joy of so we attained independence after a long struggle, because Kenyans were being oppressed seriously. The land had been taken away. Um, um, Africans were classified as, as not even second class, third class uh, uh, people. You had apartheid in this country. There was a white man, there was the Indian, there was the Arab, and then there was the African, number four, at that time. And people rose up uh, in resistance to this colonial rule. You will hear the story of Chief Koinangi, who in 1912 had to go to the court to apply to be allowed to plant coffee in his farm, because no natives were not allowed to plant coffee. And he had to fight to be allowed to, to, to plant coffee. People were not allowed to settle in certain parts of their country. But there was resistance in 1922. A man called Hari Duku led a demonstration in the center of Nairobi, near where the central police station is today. And the colonial police opened up fire, and many people were killed. Some were arrested and detained. Hari Duku was taken to Kismayu, which was then part of Kenya, and he was detained there for several years. Then came later on the struggle for land, the Mau Mau struggle. But there was also struggle in other parts of the country. We were in Kenya. But before that, the Nandi resistance, as you heard about, led by Samuel Koitalel. The Kamba resistance here, led by Mwindu Mbingu. Uh, the resistance by the people of Western Kenya, Ojijo Teko, Agula Awala, Elijah Masinde, Wanameme, just to mention but a few. You will remember, of course, Mekatiri uh, Wamenza um, from the coast. So there are several. Uh, people of this country who resisted colonialism. Eventually, uh, Mau Mau Freedom Movement came up in 1952. And a state of emergency was declared in this country. Many people were arrested, were detained, and very many people were killed during that struggle. It's a very bloody struggle. You must remember that before that, a man called Wayaki Wahinga who was arrested from his home, taken all the way to the Savo, made to dig his own grave, and was buried alive in his own grave. So uh, the struggle was, was very bloody. But in the end, independence came. And independent was a combination, the struggle was a combination of the freedom fighters who were fighting and those who mobilized the masses to protest, to urge for independence in this country. And of course, you remember the Kapengoria 6, Jomo Kenyatta, Villar uh, Kagia, Chingoneko. Kumu Karumba, Fred Kubai, Paul Ngei. Then came the first elected African members of LEGICO. Here we remember Jaramogo Gengo Dinga, Masinde Muliro, Tom Boyer, uh, 
Lawrence Oguda, Daniel Rapmoy, Ronald Gala, Zao Mwimi, those were the people who were elected members. Eventually others joined and independence came on the 12th of December. Now when Kenya became independent, of course people were very, very expectant. Kenyans were some of the most optimistic people at that time. Uh, because you retain independence, people uh, thought that prosperity will come immediately with independence. Uh, but at that time, they coined what you would call the Kenyan dream. The Kenyan dream as coined by the founding fathers of our nation. And you find it in our national anthem that says, God bless this land of ours. Just be our shield and defender. May we dwell in unity, peace, and liberty, plenty be found within our borders. What does this mean? God, God bless this land of ours. Justice be our shield and defender. Justice can only be a shield and defender if there is democracy. May we dwell in, 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 in unity, peace, and liberty. Unity means that people who are united, people where, where there is no form of discrimination, either on the basis of race, tribe, religion, or gender. Peace and, 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 and unity. Peace. Peace is not merely in the absence of war. Peace is not merely in the absence of war. Somebody who is hungry is, cannot be peaceful. A hungry person is, cannot be peaceful. So uh, it has got a wider meaning, that peace that is talked about there. But finally says, plenty be found within our borders. Plenty be found within our borders is a very strong statement. That plenty was not going to drop like manna from heaven. It was going to be a product of the sweat and toil of the people of Kenya. Meaning what? Meaning that you must create a conducive environment for people to create wealth. People must be enabled to create wealth. And this is freedom and the rights. One is that the right to life was fundamental. To the right to health is fundamental. The right to quality education is fundamental. Right to food fundamental. Right to, um, to, to education. Right to, uh, to education. So all these were there. But then people were expectant. But over the years, the joy of independence has been tempered by many battles, a struggle that has continued for six decades. We have fought poverty. We have fought ignorance. We have fought disease. We have fought corruption, and we have fought tribalism. But these challenges march on with us. In spite of our tribulations and against monumental odds, we have fought and we are still struggling to build a thriving democracy. We are still fighting for individual freedom within our free nation. You have become the beacon of hope for the millions of immigrants for the four corners of the earth. You are struggling to forge a free and modern society that lives by the ideals of liberty, justice, and respect for human rights. You have fought and we are still fighting not to let any obstacle stand in the way of our destiny. 
I have been extremely fortunate to see the emergence and pro progression of Kenya up and close. First, as the son of a freedom fighter, my father was involved. <laughs> Two, as the son of the first vice president uh, for a brief period. <laughs> and three, as a son of a vice president turned a detainee, a fighter for the second liberation, a detainee myself, as a minister, an opposition leader, and as a prime minister. The people of Kenya endured the pain of colonialism, the tragedy of single party dictatorship, and the horror of the economic collapse of the 1980s and 1990s, enabled by the elite corruption and the weird uh, policies like the structural adjustment programs of the World Bank and IMF. In these periods of colonialism, elite corruption and ethnicization of national life, colors and cruel leaders took away lives and broke up, uh, apart families through detention camps, jails, assassinations, and state enabled high level of poverty. But all these tragedies and unfortunate turn of events could not take away the spirit of the Kenyan people. I have seen Kenyans pick their armor of courage to confront dictatorships and bad regimes. This 60th anniversary is therefore a good time to reflect on our past. It is also a time to look for the future. Where will this country be on the 120th anniversary of its birth another 60 years from today, which will be the year 2083? This is a challenge that I want Kenyans to reflect on. Where are we going to be 60 years from today? Will we still be a country going around the world with begging bowls? Will we still be a country struggling with the weight of corruption, tribalism, lack of accountability, and empty promises for which the promise makers pay no price? Are we able to set the stage for a future of a dramatic departure from the Kenya of today? As a nation, we have always had great ideals on paper, including in our constitution and various policy documents like the Vision 2030. We have values and principles of, of governance that include patriotism, national unity, sharing and evolution of power, the rule of law, democracy, and participation of the people. We also aspire for human dignity, equity, social justice, inclusive inclusiveness, equality, good governance, integrity, transparency, and accountability, among others. We aspire to live in unity, peace, and liberty. We aspire to be a nation of plenty. We aspire to be a caring nation that provides the best possible medical care to all its citizens, a nation that provides the best possible education to its children for free. That's why we promised, as Azimio, free education in primary, secondary, up to university level. We've always aspired to be the nation that extends a helping hand to the elderly, the needy, the widows, and the orphans through social security safety net programs. The founding vision is a critical document for nations that proceed to succeed. Now that we are in Catholic institution, 
you can turn to the book of Joshua chapter 1 for an understanding of the value of the founding vision. God talks to Joshua about the founding vision in the following words, and I quote, Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written, written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful." Unquote. Today, you are way off the original dream. The nation is reeling under the heavy burden of corruption, officially sanctioned, officially sanctioned tribalism, heavy burden of taxation, and a harsh and heartless leadership. We are not the confident nation we have been over the decades. Once upon a time, Kenyans were too proud and so confident of their nation that they refused to seek jobs abroad, including the United Nations. Today, our people are scrambling to leave the country. A recent study by Pew Research showed that up to 54% of Kenyans would wish to relocate from the country. Our children are struggling to get farm jobs in Israel, to be house help in Saudi Arabia, and security personnel in Qatar. And the president is looking for jobs for them there, to become ayahs there. <laughs> Government officers themselves, including a whole president, openly say that they're trying to get jobs abroad for Kenyans. Young people with the new skills and knowledge that we need are being exported because the government cannot create jobs. And the government sees it as an achievement. It is the responsibility of our government to create jobs in the country, not to look for jobs outside. When you have a whole president going running out there that is looking for jobs for people here, something is terribly wrong. We live on debt, but we still live large. We drove ourselves into the trap of the IMF and the World Bank and their unusual conditionalities that are driving us back to the 1980s and 90s. We are on the downward spiral and a steady one at that. We are staring at a doom future. We are uncertain and fearful of what tomorrow holds. We live one day at a time because the longer term founding vision has been dropped. It is my position that if we return to the founding vision of this country, Kenya can emerge in its 80th or 100th and 20th anniversary as one of Africa's greatest democracies and a secure and flourishing homeland for her children. You can imagine as a democratic state that is governed by law, respects human rights, and rejects corruption. I deliberately put emphasis on pursuit of democracy and rejection of corruption as a critical pathway to Kenya's progress. If we return to the founding vision in the coming decades, Kenya will be able to witness a period characterized by tolerance and integration between communities. The country will witness equitable sharing of the wealth that God put at our disposal. If we return to the founding vision, Kenya will live through a period where leaders answer to the people, not the other way around. We'll have a country where leaders focus their energies on important things like founding education and schools, funding education and schools, fighting corruption, creating jobs here for the children, 
we educate and, and casting the bad, bad, bad end of the people. Kenya will then open up a hopeful chapter in which her people can live a normal, normal, normal lives. As things turn today, Kenyans are not living normal lives. The dramatic departure the country needs for, for, from the sorry state of affairs of today will not arrive easily. Many will say it cannot happen. It will meet violent and even deadly resistance. Transition is a bold vision, but I know it can be achieved. I have been fortunate to live long enough to witness nations and regions turn around their fortunes in 50 years or even less. Think about the current prosperous and stable Western Europe. Europe went through total war and genocide that ended in 1945. During and after that war, it was difficult to believe that 50 years later, Western Europe would be free, peaceful, and prosperous. And I happened to have been in Germany, which was the aggressor, and which was completely devastated. Most German cities were raised to the ground by bombs after the war had actually ended. But 15 years later, when we went to Germany and then went to Britain and France, we think that it was Britain and France that lost the war and that Germany won the war. It happened because of foresight, dedication, and hard work of the people. South Korea went through a crippling war and sought help from Ethiopia during the war between 1950 and 1955. Ethiopia sent 6,037 soldiers to Korea. Now Korea provides aid to Ethiopia and to Kenya and all African countries. Kenya once, once, once upon a time gave aid to Singapore before Singapore zoomed past us. In a mere six decades, Japan emerged as a democracy and an economic powerhouse manufacturing and exporting high quality products to every household in every part of the world. When I was growing up as a child, people did not want to see anything in Japan. Japan quality was known as inferior quality. Nobody touched anything Japanese. Today, Japan is equal to high quality. People want to don't question Toyota anymore, uh, and so on and so forth. Within vision, a lot can happen in the next 50 years, and I pray that Kenya can rise to the occasion. At this moment, it is proper to recognize and say, Thank you to the nations and the development partners that have stood with us in our journey as a nation over the last 60 years. And here, we talk about the US, the UK, the EU, China, Japan, Korea, among others. We thank you. We have our neighbors to thank for this 60 years journey as a nation. Uganda remains our biggest and most reliable trading partner. We thank them for the loyalty. Tanzania remains a second home to Kenyans because of their friendliness and people-to-people -people ties across the border. We thank them. We thank the entire East African community block of, of nations for their support and friendship. It is my firm belief that if we made good use of the help and good goodwill that the nations like the US, UK, EU, China, and others are extending to us, Kenya can emerge from the poverty and take its place among the economic powers. 
if we cemented and respected the ties we have with our neighbors, Kenya can cement its place as an economic powerhouse and grant, grant of democracy in the region. But something stands between us and the future, which we desire. Corruption is killing our future. Tribal, tribalism is stealing our potential. Under the current regime, these two vices are officially sanctioned. The country is divided between people with the shares and those with no shares. Shame on them. <laughs> the corrupt are getting plum jobs and state protection, while those who try to stop corruption get arrested and arraigned on trumped up charges. In the case of KCP, indications are that NEC as an institution will be sacrificed to protect the cartels. I therefore wish to call on our development partners to partner with us in calling out the ills of corruption and tribalism and crippling, uh, that are crippling our country and making nonsense of the aid we obtain from abroad. The transformation of this country deserves requires a generation of leaders with the courage to confront and defeat corruption and tribalism and direct public resources to public causes without discrimination. We need a generation of leaders who stand firm on the solid rock of values and who can tell when the nation is taking the wrong turn. From where I stand, and at my age, I know the country is taking a wrong turn when a 14-year-old child has to go to court to seek justice over KCP marks. Kenya is failing her children. I know the country is taking a wrong turn when workers take home only a third of their basic salaries, the rest going to taxes. When somebody told me, that take my salary and give me the tax. I'm better off with the tax than the salary. <laughs> it is wrong when a person earning 50,000 shillings has to surrender 20.5% of that money to compulsory taxes. We need a change that will make our fathers proud of the nation they founded. We need to return to the original vision of a selfless leadership that will be a light unto other nations. We need to secure this country and its future by building a mighty democracy that can endure and withstand the worst of the challenges to our nationhood that might emerge in future. And I believe it is possible. It can be done. We can do it. God bless Kenya. On Sunday, we may sit for a short while. I think as you are listening to the Right Honorable Raila Molo Odinga, I'm sure you are burning where, what happened to our Kenyan dream. What happened to our Kenyan dream? We are the generation today that we can turn that dream into a reality. If all of us can stand up and say no to the vices that are eating us, Kenya is not a poor nation. We are a rich country, 
but we, the country is being mismanaged by people who are not ready to take us to Canaan. I'm sure as you sit here, the young people of today, the Z generation, they are yearning and saying what happens. The dream of our fathers, the dream of Kenya shall not die. We shall not let it die. Not under our watch as the leaders of today. We are proud to be in opposition and we shall put this government on its toes. We shall not tire to keep on reminding them that they are leading us on the, in the wrong direction. We shall not tire to tell them that they are overburdening Kenyans. Why would leaders go in, be elected in the offices, but the only thing they do is enrich themselves? There's a lot of wastage in this government. They are telling us to cut some things, but when you see what is happening in the government, it's going the wrong way. 60 years of Kenya, we must say no and no. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure there are many of you who have something to say, maybe a few reactions before we end this session. Can we have a show of hands, those who want to make a, any, a remark or reaction, anything? Can we have any from this side? There, one. We come here, this lady. From this side, we go to you, my, my friend, behind you. On this side, yes. We start from there. Can somebody deliver a mic? Please stand up, the one who raised his hand first. And we just have one minute, just say something, either a question, a clarification, or a reaction on what you have just heard. Before I do that, uh, may I recognize the members of parliament who are here? My deputy whip, Mweshmiwa Mark Mwenje, please be upstanding and wave to the crowd. Mweshmiwa Irene Mayaka, Senator Mikori, my friend, stand and wave. Mashimiwa Maina Nchenga, is right here. Kamau Waraila, I see you there. Kenta, I can see it, Mashimiwa. Pole, and many other leaders. Our MCS who are here, please be upstanding, let us see our MCS who are present, be upstanding and let us acknowledge them. Thank you very much. And let us acknowledge all of us who are here present. Please, please go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I go by the name Kanini Timothy, and I'm very proud to be among this audience of today. And allow me to say that I've learned a lot this day, but the thing I can clarify much, or the thing that I can put emphasis of what we've been taught today is that we need to be very resilient in whatever we do. We have learned that Kenya has come from a very far place and we are going very far and this is not the time to stop. We need to be always on our toes each and every morning, each and every time and each and every minute. Allow me not, allow me not to say much but just to stop there and wish you guys a very good and a very wonderful day. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Bring the mic to this lady here. She's here. Please introduce yourself and say what you are. Vijana Tibim. Vijana, hi. Komajina, uh, my name is Mudoni Mburu. Thank you very much for being here. Baba, we salute you for the resilient and the hard work that you have put in placing Kenya here. Indeed, at 60 years, for Kenya celebrating 60 years, it has been indeed a remarkable journey, which we do celebrate you and salute you, even for having the constitution. Asante sana kwa safari hiyo ambayo tumeweza kupitia. 
And Baba, just to urge you and commend you, kindly keep up the spirit. We say even when the child is misbehaving, we do not throw the baby and the water together. Kenya is your baby. So Baba, we urge you to soldier on with us. Na sasa sisi kama vijana, tutasonga na Baba, tutatemea na Baba, na ata kama mambo itakuwa aje, we will live to see your legacy being delivered in Kenya. Baba, we know that the leaders are dealers of hope. Even Winston Churchill said that. Continue being a dealer of hope. Where there's hopelessness, we will spread hope, we will spread peace, and we will continue walking this journey. Asante sana, God bless you, and God bless Kenya. Thank you. The gentleman there, before we come to you, Mishimio. Uh, there, there, behind there. Uh, thank you, Mashima Raila Odinga. My name is Aroko. You have walked this journey the whole of your life. And we thank you for being there for the nation. What we can assure you is that being the youth, we will take up the journey. And your ambition, your mission for the country will be met by the people you see here. Thank you very much. Uh, the, the gentleman behind there. Please, give, it, give the mic to that gentleman. He was the first one to raise his hand. Thank you very much. Uh, Your Excellency, Right Honorable Prime Minister Raila Amor Odinga. I'm here courtesy of Chairman Maina Jenga. My name is Prophet Paul Mwagi. I'm actually a grandchild of Congo Karuba, not by fixing, but by reality. I was very happy when you mentioned the Kapeguria 6 and uh, Congo Karuba disappeared from this land. Nobody knows his whereabouts. Baba, it, it will be my joy one day to hear that we have discovered where Congo Karuba went at, uh, at your effort and we shall all celebrate because that is within the historical injustice. The other thing, Baba, I would like to request you is the narrative that has always, always been sung every day about Mau Mau compensation. I don't know who holds the money, where should it be uh, covered, recovered from? UK, CBK, State House. Baba, can you dig for us and give us the information? Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, John? Yes. Mweshimua Baba Raila Molo Dinga. As I was seated here and I was listening to what you are saying, I've learned two things. One, you have talked about several leaders who have been in this country. The only thing I've learned about those leaders is that they believed in something. And actually, there were people that could be trusted by the things that were happening in this country. Baba, as you sit there today, they hate you for the things we love you for. The same things they hate you are the same things we love you for. That you have been our leader who has been steady first. Baba, as you leave us today, we believe that all leaders who are here, the young people who are here, can you believe in something? Can you drive this country to where Baba and the rest drove this country for us to have it today? That going forward, Baba, we believe that we have a date with the future. The young people of this country, as you talk about 60 years from now, can we be Baba of those years? Baba, me as Mkoya, I'm taking the mandate to say that I'm going to be you, I'm going to copy what you have done in the past, okay. and we are going to move with young people okay. and other leaders who are here. Our leaders, I urge you, you have listened to Baba. Kenya is aching. Kenyans are suffering. Go to parliament, put this government on check, ensure that Kenyans Children who are supposed to go in school in January, go to school, and the government that is in place today, listen to what Kenyans are going through. Thank you, Baba. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Baba. I'll have one more, then we close this session. Thank you. Okay, we'll yes. move this side. Already I have. Yes. Please sit down, Kwanza. The other one, the other gentleman. Mishimi Wangea. Okay, Asadi. Uh, Your Excellency, Honorable Raila Odinga, I'm uh, very impressed by what you have done today. 
And I hope the youth of Kenya have listened to what you have said. I come from a community called the Maasai community. Our people were the ones who were actually forced out of the Lakipa lands, all the way through Nakuru, uh, 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 all the way to uh, uh, Wazingishu. If there is any community that has suffered in this country, it's the Ma community. We are dispossessed of our lands and we tried to fight for the land during the Lancaster Conference. We were denied that right. At the moment, and everybody knows, we are still suffering. And had Baba taken the mantle of leadership, this community would have been far, far better than the way it is. And so I, all, uh, Kenyan people will ask us, what has Baba given you? Let me tell the Kenyan people, wait not for Baba. We will not have retrieved a very important resource like the Mao Forest. We will not have even been in the map of this country. And Baba, there is something going on, something fishy going on about the Mao Forest. The other day, we saw that Ruto gave out 60,000 hectares of the land, sold them for this carbon credit thing. Without the participation of the community, without the participation of the Kenyan people, the country is being auctioned day and night by the regime. And I like, and I think maybe some people know me, some don't. I was a member of parliament for Narok North for two terms. I was contesting for governor of Narok County in the last election. I won by a landslide. And what they did, they gave the purported governor his certificate in Nairobi. The first And I'm talking to the youth of this country, and that's my last point. This is the first century. And it hurts me to see, in the, in, when you go through all the platforms on social media, our children are... are taught not to think, but they are to insult one another, to insult tribe, to insult everything, while other youth in the whole world are discovering new things. They are making life better. We are being divided into, or we are actually being forced into tribal clan cocoons. Where are we heading, our youth? You are supporting people who stand for nothing. Thieves, people who will destroy this country. And not for me and Baba, you are destroying this country. Or it's yourselves, your future, your progeny. And I'm telling you, if you don't turn around and say it's our country, it is not Ruto's country, it's our country. We are going nowhere. So Baba, thank you so much for this. We are with you and we'll always be with you. And let me tell the Kenyan people, the time to say this is our country is now, it's not tomorrow. Because by 2027, if things continue the way they are continuing, we'll have no country. We'll have nothing. We'll have nothing. Already you have no jobs. Already you have nothing. Even university students are not getting the, the money for their schooling. Where is the money going to? You are destroying education. Baba, when I read what you said the other day, yesterday about the exams, our children have been even denied. They are being denied the fruits of their labor, the fruits of their intelligence. They are being robbed of their future. How do you deny the children are max? They are max. They work for eight years and you deny them their max. You go and mark exam in the week because you want to loot, you want to pay yourself. So all I'm saying is that we must stand as a country. We don't look at tribes. We don't look at any other thing, but we look at ourselves as Kenyans. Thank you, Your Excellency. Asande. You're having a mic, please one minute. Thank you, the future governor. To His Excellency, my president. My name is called Kombedo Michael. I'm a resident of Kibra and Langata Slam. Baba, if you want, Baba, you have mentored us, you are our political father. The people, the leaders that were voted on account of their digital ages, the leaders that were voted on account of what they can do, Baba, you should sit down and these people go in front to work for you. We don't want a situation where these leaders are just following you, but they are doing absolutely nothing at the ground. For instance, Baba, you launched you launch ODA membership registration drive, Baba, most of constitution in this country, most of the wards, most of the counties, these governors, these MPs, these
these MCAs, these senators, and these women reps, they are doing absolutely nothing. Baba, they should work. Baba, sometimes I see you going to Somalia, sometimes part of Somalia. Baba, I see you go to Migori, go to Siaya, go to Mombasa in the name of Kenyans. Yet the people that you fought for, yet the people that you nominated, yet the people that you gave, they gave certificate are doing absolutely nothing. Baba, we the youths. We should work. Baba is an old person. Baba is giving us advices and wisdom. Let's push for these things. Let's go to the streets. Let's not wait for Baba. Baba, to the youth of Nairobi, we are going to work from Ugenya, from Nairobi, and other parts of the country, Baba. We need to work as a team. Baba, sit and watch your pillow people work for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank One you. last. Uh, you and then the gentleman behind you, then we close. Good afternoon. Baba, good afternoon. You can see the mood of people all over Kenya. Baba, people are crying. My name is Amasi Ambani. I'm a lawyer from Ikolomani. I've been working with Baba. As for now, I'm just from Malaysia. I've come, Baba, but we are even crying. We don't want to stay anymore in Kenya, Baba. Please hear our cry. We are ready now to see, you can see now how everything is corrupt. We are not comfortable. Everybody is crying. Nobody has even 50 shillings amongst us. Why, Baba, why? Number one, let us change the IBC. Let it go. We can't continue voting for you, Baba. You win and they steal. Let them go. We don't want IBC. What a shit is it? IBC let it go. Baba, you removed Moi. If you remove Moi by Blonlongo, let us remove Ruto. Yes. Who is Ruto? He's killing. How can even God award him? He's a killer. He's somebody who doesn't want people. He's corrupt. Look at, and Baba, let me tell you, it is empathetic. That is Sodom and Gomorrah. You see, I don't want to mention, that is Sodom and, better us even when we are drinking. Them, now they are sleeping with one another, one another. Ask me, Leodium. I'm happy Maina Njenga is here. Baba, when you unite with Maina, Maina Njenga, stand up. And, uh, and Rachel, Rachel, stand up. The comrades, stand up. This is Jeshia Baba. I want my Nanjenga to come to Kisumu so that Gashagwa can know we are ready. With my Nanjenga, my Nanjenga on Kwanza. Comrades power. Comrades power. People's power. Baba. Tukuhapa. Baba Tukuhapa. We are very happy to hear the history of 60 years since independence. Most of us were not there, even they were not born, even ourselves. It is good that God has kept you alive to be able to tell us the history of what happened even before independence. This is the right time. To listen to Baba, Baba has been in the struggle for many years. He is our elder, he is our people's president, and we must listen to him. Our work right now is to pick from what he has left, to continue with the determination, with the, our effort ahead, and join hands to make people proud like the way Baba has made us proud. Uh, kuna shida moja. Tukiangalia, unajua wengine wanasema upande wa Masai. Sisi tuko katika location ambaye, sisi watu wengine watatu wa kisimama, wanaitu ati wawo ni mungiki. Sosa nauliza, vijana haa wote ambao wamekosa kazi. Wakikosa kazi ni shida yao? Ni shida enyu? Mukikosa help ni shida enyu? Sasa kazi yetu ni kuangalia mbele na kusimama imara, kufata amri ya baba na kusimama kabisa. Wakati Musa alifariki, alikuwa anakuwa na miaka mingi sana, akafariki. Lakini mwenyezi mungu alitokea Joshua, akamuambia, be strong and of good courage. Be strong and of? Because you are the people 
who are going to lead the, the nation into the promised land. Sasa, nataka ni wambie, mawaitha tumewepewa na baba, tumepewa na viongozi wote, sasa ni wakati wetu kusaidia hii kazi paka tufau. May God bless you. Asande sana. May I just the students who are here any student who wants to make a remark this is for students 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 please oh, happy uh, they have said happy to speak for you uh, the gentleman there in a suit i'm giving three one two One minute, one minute. Sorry, sorry. Comrade Power. Comrade Power. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, Dr. Raila Amolo Odinga, our able president. Now, I want to talk on behalf of youths. And uh, my name is Wilson Ogweno, and the young people, especially the future leaders of this nation. Baba was giving us a very important uh, document. We call them documentaries. But people just tend to hear, but they don't utilize. Why don't you be, why don't you be a good listener? and a good practitioner. Because when we are saying, okay, youths, let's go and do this, youths are not there. But today as we sit here, good number of these youths are suffering. It's youths who are suffering. And it's youths who is supposed to have the, what we call the who. Your who is the voting card. Now we are doing the registration. Good number of you are not even voting. Good number of these youth sitting here are not even voting. They say, no, let them vote. We have won, let them vote. I personally, with my own resources, before we go to the election, pre uh, the 2022, I mobilized, I mobilized 159,000 new voter registration personally from county to county and now that we are in this process of uh, membership registration I've, I've been doing it so why don't we come together because unity is strength and we cannot get that strength if we don't have a unity we are waiting for baba but when baba said let's go and do this no one is there, there to be seen may we have that strength to work together as one family to protect the future because there's something called proper prior planning produce perfect performance how can we perform if we don't do it May God bless you. God bless Kenya. Wora, one thing I'm paying for you is long life because it's just around the corner. I know it's coming. Thank you so much. Thank you. Give the next speaker on the other side. Behind there. Okay. Okay. It will come to you. The one behind you there. Then you bring it to this gentleman who has been raising his hand for a long time. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm Chacha Mwita, a comrade from Cooperative University of Kenya. Uh, thank you, Baba, for giving us a good history uh, of Kenya since we started. Actually, the 60 years corresponds with my mother's age. That's the 60 years. She will be celebrating on 12th. Actually, we have seen this Kenya struggling. Let me talk on behalf of comrades. 
you have estimated the, the, the salary of a, there's a person who is earning about 50,000 and being taxed about 25% of that. For example, a parent who is at home, having whatever, uh, having three kids who are at secondary school, one comrade at, co at a university, and, all, and remember that the help that we are supposed to be given, it's delaying. And remember that they have increased the school fees. Some others are now, uh, uh, they are supposed to pay over 50,000 so that they can settle for the exams. And remember, it's something that you will need to pay after the end of uh, your, your four years. Now, Kimaliza, at four years, Kimaliza, you are graduating, you are being told that there is no job here at, Ke at Kenya. Eh? What's that, comrades? Unanyimwa kazi, uh, unanyimwa uh, loan, and then umepewa, umemaliza kugraduate, unambiwa hakuna kazi, and you are supposed to pay Youth, actually, we need to open up our minds. We need to open up. Let us help Baba. When after Baba, who will take it? After Baba, who will be there? I think, actually, we have remained two strugglers in this world, me and Baba. The gentleman in, in orange, please stand up and take a mic, and we shall close it at Tabitha. God is good, and all the time, right on Reboraila Molodinga, Vice Chancellor, Governor Nairobi incoming. My name is Davis <laughs> Binoluach. I was born in the plateaus of Nyabono, Nyakach constituency, Kisumu County, in the shores of Lake Victoria. Baba, I work for your party. I'm the, I'm the last one there. I graduated from university two years ago, and I'm one of the last entrants in the ODM party, courtesy of, I will see, I saw Benson Musungu somewhere. They scouted me. And uh, yes, I want to ask this question, Baba. What do you think about the history of Kenya? There are things we are taught in the books, and there are things we read in your book and in Jaramogi's book, uh, uh, Not Yet Uhuru, and in Gugi Wathiongo's books. And in Daniel Branch, uh, looters and grabbers and Kenyans between hope and despair. There's a very big disconnect. There are people we are told are heroes of this country. But if you look at the, the, the real history books, they are not heroes. Is it time we rewrite the history of Kenya? That's my first question. Number two, Baba, what do you think about our generation? What should be our biggest generational goal? Because Jaramogi, and, and, and Bildad Kagia and the team fought for colonialism. And they can see. And that day when the world will end, God will ask them what they did in this world. And they will say we brought, uh, we, we drove away the colonialists. And Baba will be asked and his generation, what did you fought for? What, what did you fight for? And Baba will say, I fought for multipartism and devolution. Baba, what do you think this generation, my generation, should focus on? I went to Baba's office one day, and I, want, I, I had a quote, and I want to complete with this quote from Baba's office. It was a quote by Martin Luther King Jr. It motivated me, and I want to read it in this forum today, so that he made, it may motivate you. And it says, and I think it's one of the quotes that motivates Baba, that you may be 38 years old, as I happen to be, and one day, some great opportunity stands before you and calls you to stand up for some great principle, some great issue, some great cause, and you refuse to do it because you are afraid. Continues, you refuse to do it because you want to live longer. You are afraid that you will lose your job, or you are afraid that you will be criticized, or that you will lose your popularity, or shoot or you are afraid that somebody will stab you or shoot you or bomb your house so you refuse to take the stand well you may go on to live until you are 90 but you are just as dead thank you at 38 as you will be at thank 90 you. thank, thank you. you so much david from Nyakaj. thank you thank you give okay, this uh, lady Finish. There, there, there. I don't know how the mic will get up there. 
to ampere. Comrades power. Comrades power. My name is Gitaranga Esther. I am the president of all female students in Kenya. Baba, you've said <laughs> thank you. Baba, you've said that we have had 60 years of colonial power and we have had 60 years our, under our own government. And there are some people who are really trying to sabotage the steps we are taking as young people. You have held our hand, we as the young women and generally all the youth. And there are people like Chairman Mainajenga who have taken up what you're doing to come and hold our hand, to come and support us. So the moment he's being attacked, the, uh, the attacks come to us. They come to women and they say, Chairman Atembe Nawaschana, ama sisi ni wanaume. It is very unfair and when they can, they try to sideline us, they try to remove us from the picture, and then they call our young men mungeke. But by the moment they kill our young men under the disguise of mungeke, it means even us as women, we will not get husbands, we will not get good fathers. <laughs> they are talking about alcoholism among Mount Kenya people. When chairman tried to collect these young men back together and give them a vision, a purpose, he's trying to dissociate and to destroy this young this young man therefore an attack on the young men of mount kenya is directly an attack to us as women thank you thank you very much thank you very much let us be upstanding for our national anthem dj our national anthem as we close please excuse me just hold on, just hold on, just pause. Let Baba say something, then we close, please. DJ, just a minute. Hello. Uh, I thought, uh, I thought I would, uh, hello? Hello? Yeah, I thought it would be proper for me to just say a few words only. First, I appreciate the issues that have been raised by those who have an opportunity to speak on behalf of the others. All of them actually point out one thing, that things are not going in the right direction in our country. That Kenya needs uh, some kind of rectification. Project Kenya. Somebody asked about the compensation for the Mau Mau's. That is a subject for another day. But I want to say that, you know, throughout the history of our country, there have always been two forces pulling in two opposite directions. That the protest for change and development, the forces for retention of the status quo, that those who have been fighting to retain the status quo. Even when people were fighting for independence, that those whose intention was basically to remove the colonial system, remove Azungus, and bring in an, uh, 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 an African regime, and use those powers which the colonialists were using to oppress the natives use it themselves as Africans to lord it over fellow Africans. That's why the when the Mzungu went, they said Mzungu Weusi or Mengia. They came in, they transplanted the colonial system and then themselves became the colonizers. They're using the very same system that the, the, the British were using to oppress the African people, they're using it to oppress the African, the fellow African people. But those who said they wanted to make independence meaningful, people were fighting against colonialism because colonial system was ruthless, was alien, was dictatorial. They wanted to replace it with a system that was more responsive to their needs, a system that will be more humane, a system that will enable them to realize their dreams. And that's why they are talking about the fundamental rights of the people of Kenya. The right to life. The right to food. The right to shelter. The right to health. The right to education. So the fundamental human rights of our people. 
And if you can guarantee those rights, Kenya can prosper. So we have seen this before the first regime came and went. The second regime came and went. And the, the first regime, there was attempt to allow people to get into the economy of this country. So a, a kind of a, an African middle class was emerging, but it was still very small. The major part of middle class was still very much alien. The second class that came, the second regime, tried to suppress that emerging Africa, African middle class and create what is called the Comprado Bourgeois, Comprado regime, commission agents. Those who dreamed were just to let a commission happen, commission happen, commission happen. It impoverished our people completely. The third regime tried, tried, and there was a clear vision. That's why that regime came up with the vision, vision 2030, which was aimed at removing our people from poverty to a middle income status by the year 2030. And this is a clear vision for the first time. I am happy to be, have been the part and parcel of coining that vision 2030. But after that again, we, we lost direction now. The thing became a little bit um, grayish, grayish. Now we've come back to the dark era, trial and error. Everything goes. You can come here and, and lie, sell the lie here. He, tutafanya he, tutafanya he, tutajenga he, tutafanya he, tutafanya he. Everything tutafanya, tutafanya. Kesho, he. All the times, just promises and promises. They say this gentleman lies all the times, and all the times, and that is. See, gentlemen, you. Even if you give them 100 years, they will still just be lying. Nothing will happen under this stupid regime. I thank you very much. Thank you. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Thank you. Now, before the anthem, Tafadali, Naomba to pick Baba Makofi, when you're far. Sasa no tuwaze Makofi vizuri. Round of applause for Raila Amolo Odinga. Baba, I'll also give my clap. But just before that, I'm very privileged. There's a sensitive part of the history, Baba Mepeana. And I hope Kila Mutu Kwei Hall is privileged to sit with the son of a former vice president, a son, he became a minister, an MP, fought for us, and an opposition leader, and the prime minister, of course, and I want to say, he's the pillar of hope. And these are my statements. If God is with us, which I know he is with us, he should be the next president of Kenya. <laughs> Baba, we are privileged, highly privileged. And thank you for coming. And if you feel the way I do, a song is not bad to sing, see you? What the hell is you looking for? Can I young Luo make money anymore? Shake your feet, baby girl, and I go. Maji, maji, nyaku arondi jo ama Luo, but. Eh, 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 eh. Get the hell out of my face, bitch.
Thank DJ, you, DJ, Tosha. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So one more. Asante, Misana. 